like about uh, Ryan Russell and, and the potential he showed you last year? He's gotten a lot better. I think he has uh, big league potential. He's really grown into his frame. He's a, he can be a very large defensive end, very large, very athletic uh, defensive end. At the beginning of the season last year, he was doing a good job of learning how to line up in the right spot and just you know, starting to scratch the surface from a technical standpoint. And by the end of the season, he had really gained a lot of momentum as a player and was playing his position very well. And I uh, saw him starting to beat a lot of the offensive linemen one-on-one, uh, particularly in the passing situations. You know, So he has the potential, I think, to be exceptional versus the run and the pass. I think he can be a big-time defensive end. He showed a knack for making plays, especially late in the year, right? I mean, he had, I think he, he led your team in recoveries and fumbles for stuff. He did well statistically, but, but he's a player. I mean, it really showed up, you know, uh, took he, uh, again, as the season went on and he, and he learned more about what he was supposed to do, then he started making plays, but he is a player. He has, he, and he has a fantastic upside to him. Uh, he's, like I said, he's gotten a lot bigger and stronger, and he still has a lot of time left, you know, a lot of college eligibility left. So I think he's going to be a, a real, real special player at his position. Did you get, out, did you get what you wanted out of these two days? You Absolutely. Think? I'm yeah, very pleased with it. Uh, we came in and put a lot in. The, our quarterbacks were way ahead of where they were this time last year for you know for obvious reasons. But but this time last year we didn't have a a, a a clock out here in practice and we couldn't signal the plays in yet. You know and we're out here you know being effective on offense uh, and from a quarterback management standpoint. You know and I'm very very pleased with it. Uh, the defense has done a good job from an installation standpoint. The, the package is easy to present, and it's, it's easy to learn, and, and they're not making many mistakes. There's a lot of little things that I see out here that I really like. We haven't turned the ball over in any in, in the last two practices in the team situations. Now, it's not live, so that helps some, uh, but you still have to get the snap and get the exchange and throw it to the right guy. And then uh, defensively, we haven't jumped all sides. Our defensive line has it in any of the team situations. We've been changing the snap count up, and we've been lining up uh, fast on both sides of the ball. So a lot of little things that uh, I, I see uh, happening already early in spring. So I'm very excited about it. Very pleased with it. I'm sorry. What are some maybe position battles, so to speak, that you're really looking forward to seeing? You know, when they come back and everywhere, really in spring yeah. ball. You know, everybody's competing for a job, and you know, there's a lot of guys that are getting you know great opportunities right now. There's some guys that haven't. Uh, played much yet since they've been here and they're getting their first shot. There's, there's some guys that are just now getting here and they're getting their shot because the red shirt's over. So, you know, it's open market. All jobs are open. You know, obviously the, the quarterback battle's the one that'll get the most attention, but every job out here is open and I think there's great competition on our football team right now. Just uh, with the new uh, kickoff rule, um, how, how do you, how's that going to affect you guys moving forward? Can you still get to that number one spot uh, and kick off returns? Somebody has to be number yeah. one. It might, might as well be us. And we're all playing under the same rules, so absolutely, we'll certainly try to repeat that. And we, you know, we, we have a great emphasis on special teams. You know? and I know we'll have a great plan. You know, obviously, you'll have to bring some out, and you have to be smart. I think the biggest difference it's going to make is is on the decision making of the return man. He's going to get a lot of reps in a lot of different circumstances uh, in, in practice of bringing the ball out from a timing standpoint and the depth standpoint. So the decision-making process of the return man is, is really going to be important. And then, you know, a lot of people uh, will have to decide whether or not they're going to kick the touch back and, and, and move on with it or kick the ball deep and high and try to hem them down inside. So I think schematically it'll, it'll change some people's <coughs> approaches. But uh, I, I think we're – ahead of the game in some ways, special teams-wise, and, and we'll find some way to take the new rule and, and make it to our advantage. Do you like the benefit of, of a touchback getting to the 25 out of the, you know, instead of the 20? I guess if they're going to make you take them, you might as well give the five <laughs> yards, you know, so not a whole lot of choice on either one. You know, the thing that's tough is when you kick it out of bounds now because it tacks on from where the ball is kicked from, so right. the ball is brought way out, you know, and you kick it out of bounds. I think that's, that's really significant. And uh, there will be some other rule changes, too, that they're, they're kicking around in regards to uh, onside kicks and interfering with someone's right to catch the ball. So there's going to be a lot of changes, uh, special teams-wise, over the next couple of months. It looked like Rouse was working with the first team, if, if we saw that correctly, in the early practice. Mm -hmm. I mean, is that a product of what he's done, or Brandon Taylor is not ready to go? Or? Well, you have two guys that have played a lot. You know, Michael's been redshirted, hasn't right. played any in the games, but he, he's a real talent and a, an extremely hard worker. But you have two guys that have played a lot that aren't participating as a result of injuries. One of them being Brandon Taylor and the other one being Ryan Isaacs. And then, uh, obviously, Bruce has played a lot. and He's one of our 
better players, but he missed some practice time uh, with us with uh, some back issues. Uh, so he got behind a little bit, and so we've got Michael working with the ones. But, but, but every day it changes out here, depth chart-wise. So every day we're competing. But uh, he's the guy that was able to, to go the, the hardest and the most when, when the spring ball started. Uh, they're also talking about <clears throat> requiring seven wins for a bowl game. Is, is, that, is that a direction college football you think needs to go? I haven't given a whole lot of thought, really. You know, I mean, what are they going to do if they don't have enough teams with seven? They're not going to have the games. I mean, anytime in my mind that you can promote a football game, I'm for it. So, you know, I, you have a successful season and you qualify for postseason play, then, then, you, then you had a successful season and you, and you qualify for postseason play. I'd hate to negate bowl games if you didn't have enough qualifiers. Right. I mean, obviously, if they went to that, you would have less bowl games. I'm not for that. I'm, I'm not for, for reducing any kind of football, obviously. And also last year you didn't, because it wasn't official yet, the multi-year scholarships, but now that it's been passed, is that something you'll offer in starting for your 2013 class? Absolutely. You know, we're going to have to in order to be competitive. At the, the time that it was being pushed through, it was still under a review stage in some ways, and I wasn't going to produce a scholarship that hasn't wasn't uh, – 100% Eshin Stone, that's the way it was going to be, but we'll absolutely do what it takes to, in order to compete. We have a couple coaches on the staff who have NFL experience. Is that something, I mean, I know the guys like it, you know, the players say, okay, you know, this guy can show me where I need to go kind of thing. Is that something you look at all at when you're hiring a guy? They, some of the coaches, all the coaches, I think, that we've, that we've hired have great resumes. Right. You know, I think it's really attractive when you when you have a guy that has some NFL experience. It's a uh, can help you in the recruiting process. You know, a young guy, uh, a recruit, you know, wants to go somewhere where he thinks he's going to get a special coaching. And uh, sometimes NFL experience can be an indication that a guy's been real successful as a coach. So I think it helps you in the recruiting process. I, it helps in some ways, too. You know, obviously when someone's coached the elite athletes, you know, I think that can give them some edge in some ways. Uh, but uh, I like our coaches. <clears throat> they have great resumes. If they didn't have NFL experience on their resumes, I think I'd still like them a whole lot and would, would have hired them anyway. This was uh, Rob and Ishmael being active in the uh, student government part of uh, uh, of your campus. I know you like your, your team to be active off the field, but mm -hmm. this is kind of a different area where the, you know they would be going for a president, vice president of their class. Just Is that something you, you really embraced when they, they brought you the idea? I haven't spent a whole lot of time on it. Uh, you know, obviously both of those guys I think are excellent leaders and have great leadership potential. Uh, they're smart guys with a lot of pride, and they want to be a part of the, the campus life and part of the student body, and they want to be leaders in life and leaders w within our student body, and I really respect that. I don't know what all it entails. I don't know that they're, that they're sure about what it all entails either. So we'll find out more about it and we'll see, you know, the significance of it and whether or not they'll be able to manage it. But uh, I'm all for them getting involved and doing whatever they can to uh, – to step up as leaders. I think it's I think it's a big deal that they want to do it. And we'll see how it goes. I'm going to just have one thing. At this point, who do you see maybe uh, filling the uh, safety spots and also stepping in at linebacker? Well, the, the in the secondary, you know, right now we have corners and we have safeties, and we have guys working at those positions. But when it's all said and done, we're going to put our best defensive backs on the field. And if our best defensive backs, if four of those guys are Four corners, and there'll be four corners on the field. If three of those top uh, defensive backs are safeties, and there'll be three safeties on the field. We have a lot of uh, carryover in, in the teaching part of it, uh, so we're going to allow them to line up and compete and fly around and, and, and play and have fun, and we'll see who we think are the best guys to put on the field in order to give us a chance to win and then move in that direction. But I can't be clairvoyant or you know, look at a crystal ball and tell you how it's going to shape. You know, shake down or shake out when it's all said and done until those guys have had a chance to compete. But it's a very talented group of, of defensive backs, very, very talented group of defensive backs. There's not a guy over there in the two, in the two deep that's not really skilled. So there's some great competition over there. Uh, Linebacker-wise, <coughs> excuse me, it's going to depend upon what type of uh, sub package or personnel that we have in the game. You know, whether or not we have nickel or dime personnel in the game or a regular personnel in the game, that will influence which linebackers would be in the game. Uh, you know, right now you would think Will Lucas would have an edge because he started a lot of games last year and played well at times and, and finished the season strong, and he's really into it right now, and, and I think he's getting a lot better. All the other jobs, there's open open competition. So how do you handle spring break? What do you do? Well, going to go through uh, pre
pro day on on, uh, on Friday and be here with our guys and meet with the scouts. And I'm going to head down to Florida for a couple of days and get away some, and then come back, and then try to get caught up. We've got a you know a lot of uh, high school videotape to still look at from an evaluation standpoint. I was, I'm hoping to get about another maybe 80 guys evaluated before I leave. That's kind of my goal. And every day I go in there, I look at a bunch of videotape, and I come back the next day, and there's still 80 of them sitting there. <laughs> and they just keep showing up with you know, more and more tapes. It's endless. It really is. But I'm trying to get all the all the evals done before I leave. And uh, I don't know if that's going to happen or not. But uh, you want know, to get out of town for a couple of days and come back and evaluate and get ready for spring ball. And and then uh, we have the, the high school clinic in Indianapolis, uh, I think, next week from uh, tomorrow. I'll, I'll go to that and then get ready for the second part of spring.